if they interested me to in Lusaka. I've been coming since that. I would like to go now on, the, on the, our whip to, to whip as, with some issues. And uh, thereafter, we call on the, our, our, our leader of the opposition to, to, to serve on the issue. Thank, we... thank you so much, Mr. Kofupe. Good afternoon, uh, colleagues from the media. I want to start by just apologizing uh, for starting slightly late. I hope you can bear with us. Uh, you may wish to know that today is a very interesting day. Uh, all being eco, uh, this time all roads should have been leading to Tengulani of Chipata, where the, our Ngoni traditional cousins will be celebrating the famous uh, Chora ceremony. But um, in fact, starting from there, I would like to just uh, let our traditional cousins know um, and they should know that uh, we, um, as honorable members of the parliament, we are geared to go and uh, celebrate in Twala with uh, Kosi Amangosi, uh, Chief Mpeze um, uh, of the Bon speaking people. But as you must as be aware by now, um, uh, our leader, uh, President Edgar Chabarungu, who was initially supposed to um, be part of the celebrations uh, following uh, the advance part that went to go and make arrangements, the, 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 the Secretary General of the Party of the Front and the Electoral Elections Chairman, uh, Mr. Chanoktare, had gone to make arrangements. Uh, but as you uh, are aware, that um, a, the presence of our leader uh, was not welcomed uh, by those organizing the event and um, uh, we regret that with that position uh, we uh, who are members of the party of the front and uh, members of parliament uh, are equally uh, felt that it would be undesirable to go and uh, be part of that ceremony we were looking forward to uh, to be part of. Um, and uh, we hope that this uh, could be a lesson because ceremonies such as Chwala are supposed to bring uh, a diverse of you know, people uh, and, and it's not a place for politics really but it could have been a, a ceremony to unite people and uh, so to hear certain terms that were used um, we felt that uh, we couldn't uh, uh, defy our, our leaders uh, we also needed to be with uh, the leaders in solidarity uh, with the party uh, and so that also goes for the vice president who could have been uh, also in Eastern Province, our Vice President, Honorable Given Ubinda, and other senior leaders. So that's um, those of our colleagues who have traveled in Vitaly. Um, we just have to understand uh, that, uh, yes, some of you couldn't avoid, avoid not to be there, uh, but collectively, we are not going to be part of the ceremony this year. Uh, that said, I want to also just comment on one matter which has been a topical issue um, uh, the, 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 this week. And this issue um, came as a result of our former head of state making some comments on government policies. And I want to make it very clear that President Edgar Chabarum, like any other citizen has got every right to comment on government policies. And so, when he was making an evaluation of the so called free education, it was uh, within his rights. And all he was saying is that the implementation of a free education policy must not be done at the expense of quality education. 
We all know that it's only now that you are building a few classroom blocks and buying desks from the CDF. So meaning, all those children that were enrolled at the inception must have been sitting on the floor. How then were our children going to uh, uh, have quality education in that fashion? The teachers have only been uh, recruited last year. So meaning, the number of teachers that were variable at the time they started implementing this policy were few. So, let's follow when people are making comments. President Rung can't be against the free education policy himself because under his administration, you saw the reduction of school user fees from 600 kwacha to 150 kwacha under him. Under his administration, primary school was made free. And so when people are lamenting, let's, let's be sincere and let's not just express um, hate for our former leaders or current leaders. How do you, President Rung be against education when under his administration 110 secondary schools were constructed? I'm saying 110 secondary schools. Not in this classroom box we are all building, one by two and one by three, under CDF. Those were serious projects funded by the state from the state treasury. It was under President Lungo's uh, administration when the number of technical secondary schools were, were increased by converting 15 more when we have just two technical schools, as it were. So, I think people must learn to appreciate criticism and positive criticism. So, to those who have been saying President Rung is against free education and I hate it on the floor of the house today, it's been insincere. It's been insincere. And let people just focus on doing what they're supposed to do. Recruitment of teachers and other public service workers, doctors and nurses, is a routine function of government. Every government. And it has been so. Dr. Kaunda, who liberated this country with his fellow leaders, are the ones who started building schools and started recruiting teachers. How can you come and celebrate as a government to say, no, we have recruited the police. We have been policing the country before. So it's just a routine work. That's not even job creation. Because these public service workers get to retire, they need to be pressed. The population is growing, you need to match the ratio of learners and the, the, the teachers. So those are the things that people should not even brag about. But I will emphasize the point that the sixth uh, former president, Dr. Kachabarungu, is a free citizen to comment on government policies. Today, we had uh, our usual vice president's question time. And I'm sure those of you who are following, you saw how excited our mother was. Uh, when uh, uh, what has been coined as economics uh, was mentioned on the floor. She was so excited. And in her view, as you know, economics is, uh, you know, it's got that theory uh, of increasing prices in order to reduce. So today she was excited that the door which was hitting the roof as miraculously reduced. I don't know whether now that 14 hours, that long I waited for 14 hours has finally come. But that 14 hours was talking about uh, you know, single digit exchange uh, rate. Now, what she thought to address her mind to her one of the vice president is the 
high cost of living. And when she was asked, she went to down. When she was simply asked to tell the nation what measures have been put in place in order for government to cushion the poorest of the poor, common man who is struggling to just put a bag of minimum in their homes. She couldn't use the nomonomics at that point. And one wonders what government is really doing to take care of the, the people. We were lectured of how oh, now New Zambians uh, 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 should, be, should start accepting GMO foodstuffs. Now, I've always said to you before that there is a nexus between food security and national security. They don't listen in government. What happened just three days ago? Because of hunger, people didn't even care to go and, 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 and ransack a Zambia National Service storage facility, which should be guarded 24 or 7 with firearms. People went and ransacked and stopped. Now that should show you the level of what Hanga can do. And no one knows where that, those bugs, they're saying 200. No one knows whether it was 200. We are still waiting for the means of defense to get back to us. Now, this is happening at the backdrop of one Mutoropi, vehemently refusing that he was not aware of any GMO being imported in Zambia. This GMO maybe which, went, which was stolen, was stolen inland, not outside the country. Inland. Chirira Homeboy is a a Zambian town and the vice president should have done a lot of work when coming to the house today so that she could assure the Zambian people that they are not at risk of consuming this meal. There is a law in place which prohibits the importation and distribution of GMO products which is now being broken with impunity. And government can be proud to break the law. What a shame. So, we appeal to government to put their act together and ensure that they do the right thing by respecting the laws that we have for this country. We also had a MCO statement coming from. Dr. Stumbeko Mstokotwane, Minister of Finance. Again, the Minister of the Minister's statement has left more questions and answered. And it did, doesn't, didn't provide any hope for our people. He was busy talking about the tax measures that were put in, in place by his predecessors in the mining sector. And he thinks he's the only genius we have. We all remember that the government was part of before, which was the movement for one party democracy. Under President Manawasa, with Minister Mr. Magani, wind for tax was introduced in the mining sector to try and ensure that there was enough revenue that was being collected from the natural capital, the mineral resources our, of our country. And that saw the treasury receiving not less than $600 million in 2008 or thereabout. When President Monosa died, and Mr. Makando was removed, 
as if he was not part of MMT. Because today he was trying to give, uh, you know, big results that we are in PF were in panic mode when we at Nino Royal Tax introduced. He was part of MMT. And he was part of the technocrats that prepared the, 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 the mechanisms that saw the government um, introduce me for tax. He threw away. He's back again. And he's bragging. He was even insinuating that no, the mining, some of the mining investors left the country because the environment was not conducive. That's not correct. We all know why certain investors were, why government had to part away, to part company with some of the investors, like those at KCM. The same insincerity they exhibited is what they are exhibiting up to now. That's why operations can't even start. And God knows when the operations are going to start. If you go and spoke to the ordinary citizens of Chingola, even an ordinary person on the street, they will tell you that uh, they are disappointed with this government. Because even this government was also saying they were not going to entertain the investor who was at uh, KCM to come back. But we don't know what has changed under the table for that investor today to become their preference. So, we know that um, he can brag about abolishing the middle, the, 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 the middle royalty tax, which was non deductible and profit, with, with profit sharing mechanism. But he should know that just as the Bank of Zambia are lamenting that they need government to do something, because the measures, the mounted measures they're putting in place to try and strengthen the culture against convertible currencies are temporal. And that's why we salute, we salute senior citizens like Dr. Karabu who is the chairperson of the Zambia Revenue Authority. Because he has demonstrated patriotism. When he was addressing the, uh, the, 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 the technocrats that have gathered to, do, to discuss matters of taxation at a forum that drew up African countries, he was pragmatic with his message. This is a person we have given a responsibility to mop revenue for government. And as a right. he was telling African states to wake up. To work. To work. Kuti maziko ya ziwuke. Ifiaro fibuke. Kukwewa ti investors who only be good as they get benefits. And so he was saying it's time to, to not to be apologetic about correcting what is due. Give Caesar what belongs to Caesar. But when we support one event, but I hope my investors can be sure that we are sharing. It's not the first time he's doing it. So let him at least, if he can't listen to us who are politicians, let him listen to people like Dr. Harabi Funda, who he has worked with before. And who was his boss at some time. Try and get wisdom from there, so that our generations to come do not come and wear us. My colleague was just talking about the rule of law. And they are talking about some of the citizens that have been tossed around in incarceration. In the meantime, the IG, Inspector General of Police, would prefer to only issue verbal warning to people that is uh, thinking are committing treason. How does that work? And by the way, we 
are not by any way wanting to get into the affairs of the Barossa. Because the government has got the responsibility to deal with those matters. If there were commitments that were made, let those commitments be fulfilled. But it's important that these matters are addressed with sobriety. Now, the Inspector General must not, must not show the citizens that there are certain people he can touch and other people he can't touch. How dare you say? Those of you who are committing treason are making treason comments. I'm now warning you. How does that work? How does that work? In the meantime, a broker, a broker on the phone, who just sends some messages of what is now being described as just they are arrested at supersonic speed. Where are we going? Inspector General of Police Okan. Do the work you have been assigned to do after being put out of retirement. We thought you were just uh, retired, not tired. But we are now drawing conclusions that you could have been retired and retired. And maybe not equal to the task. Don't be segregative when enforcing the law. Mm -hmm. Lastly, I would like to just wish those that are going to Ntwara to take extra care on the roads and make sure that they get to where they are going safely. We could have loved to be with everyone in Tupata today, but we have made a decision to stay away in solidarity with our leader, Dr. Edgar Thank you very much. Thank you so much, uh, Honorable I think the first message was that I mean, she can come for. We have a leader, and our party is very orderly. Uh, when our leader is discriminated in that way, and when our leader finds himself in a far range, it is just right that we should uh, go with the tour. Because uh, our song about it, we So, in looking at that, I think uh, another thing that uh, the Honourable did address is the issue of the question which is also floating uh, around the social media, of which I think the Honourable and the, the leader of the opposition has directed the, the Bureau of Research to develop a position paper on it, so that we clarify further to the, to the, to the country. And I think this is an issue about uh, the context in which uh, the former president did comment on free education. The former president is an advocate of free education, but in the context of quality education, we remember that he, uh, during the 2022 20, 20, address to the, to, the, to the House, the the current president even refused to comment on free education and emphasized that he's going to venture into quality education. But I think what we are seeing in our classrooms, which are above 120 people, is not quality education. And I think he, the, 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 the whip emphasized the need that he, what we are talking about as PF, which is also found in our manifesto, the 2021-2026 manifesto, is enrollment rates, is retention rates, is progression rates. And we make we made efforts to that effect. Where if you go in our manifesto on education, you find that he, we had actually built more than 16,000 plus uh, classroom blocks, uh, classroom uh, you know, spaces to accommodate the children, and we realized, because we are very, uh, you know, strategic, we are not methodical, but we are a very strategic uh, party, we realized that the children needed uh, space first, because the classroom uh, versus pupil ratio was uh, very low, and we had to come in this land to allow to actually provide room for the enrollment rates. We further went to provide classroom for the retention rates, so that when the pupils enter the mid grades, they are retained within the education system. We further provided room for progression rates, which is we found the universities at two, the public universities, we left them to six. And that is what the president was talking about. It's a, it's a very strategic way of approaching issues. But I think further, as I said, 
you hear from us in a position paper because we feel that uh, this is a very hot issue and we are able to the task to apply ourselves to answer this particular question as we have already answered it in the, in the manifesto. I think he did also talk about the issue of power safety act which has been abused and I think the answers we are getting to government we have conflicts. People are talking about state of food. And I think the Biosafety Act is very categorical, especially in Section 7, about how this GMO food is not supposed to be allowed in the country. I think he did talk on that one. And I think he, he also scratched on what we have named now as the senior hoof. Because he, today in Parliament, they introduced a term that all those that have passed through governments are hoofs. So, Honorable Sokotoy actually qualifies to be a senior hoof because he's more senior than Honorable Kampio, uh, Honorable Kampio, he's more senior than Honorable, uh, <laughs> Honorable uh, uh, Mundiogide, even more senior than all of us here. He has been in government and if there is a person who has tinkered with the government economics and natural economics, he's the senior hoof in the name of, 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 of the Minister of Finance. Because if the word who fits the PF, then it means that more than 15 ministers in the in the in the in the UPND would qualify to be senior host if we are to go by that. Then he also closed on the issue of the IG. I think he challenged the IG that if the, the IG is man enough, that's Ninga Dambo in Western province. How do you the council there will tell me that the, the other one, the thing is that the people have been arrested for having six months, and the other one is more heavier, which is treason. And we have seen treason fronting on social media. The man cannot gather courage to go and touch those youths. We are challenging him to transfer those youths to Saka because we have complained here in Saka that after that is treason. So let, let him uh, practice the same muscles that they have practiced. Let me ask for those views if it's money enough to suck up. And whether you will enter, because there are even clear that your passports now are paid, whether you will, you will be allowed to enter there. So, I think the, the idea is this afternoon. It's a very big challenge of. How much time is someone of someone? This is a very common. Next thing, social media, the officer said they don't wear masks. So, we don't know where the idea is. But our next marriage type of meeting, now we can't have a constitution. So, about So, so allow me the media at this point to call upon the, our leader and the, we only have one leader of the opposition by the way. We don't belong to school part leader of the opposition. Uh, we only have one leader of the opposition to address us and that is the only one who can command us as members of parliament to listen, whom we can listen to. We have seen that he, there is a lonely wolf who is very loud claiming the leader of the opposition. Uh, and you who has no command. So this is the leader of the opposition. Uh, who we are talking about now. Who is now going to address the nation on different issues? Not in that. But leader of the opposition. Mkwai Trent. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Director of uh, the Ceremony this afternoon. May I start by acknowledging the presence of our members of the Central Committee, as Honorable George Sanga, Honorable uh, Stephen Campiongo, other members of parliament are uh, with us today. Honorable Mama Tembo of Feira, Honorable Menga Fuge. Earlier we were with uh, Honorable Mutuka Kafuaya, who is a member of parliament and also a member of the Central Committee. We were earlier with uh, Robert Kapianga, a honorable member from Pika. Uh, may I also uh, uh, acknowledge uh, the presence of our hardworking media our partners in this journey. We've been working together on this journey for over 24 months now. 
and uh, the Zambian people out there are relying on this partnership to be able to redirect this country, give hope to this country uh, you know, as we go forward. We know that our friends in the UPND, uh, as things stand, have failed lamentably. There is no doubt whatsoever in the mind of the Zambian people that come 2026, the UPND government will pack their bags to pave way for a new government, a government that will give hope to the Zambian people, a government that will focus on the poor people, a government that will focus on rebuilding this economy, a government that will focus on working on infrastructure programs so that this country is reopened once again to be able to realize the potential that resides in most parts of our country. So uh, the starting point as uh, we prepare the exit of the UPND, I want to join uh, those that speak earlier in calling upon Honorable uh, Stumbekum Sokotwane to resign immediately resign as Minister of Finance so that he remains a backbencher who may you know, uh, uh, contribute and participate in parliamentary business. This call uh, could not have come at a better time. We did not call upon Honorable uh, Sokotoya uh, to resign earlier. We were hoping that the day that he decide to come and make a ministerial statement, he would first start with an apology to the Zambian people, having misled the Zambian people on uh, a, you know, the, 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 the health of this economy. I'll take you back, uh, countrymen and women. In 2021, uh, late 2021, when difficult questions were asked on Nabu Sokotwane, he asked the Zambian people to wait for the PND budget, which budget would only take effect in 2022. Midway down the line in 2022, Zambian, the Zambian people, through their representatives, came back with more difficult questions. Honorable Sokotwane asked the Zambian people to wait for the IMF program. In 2023, the Zambian people still came back on the floor of the House through their representatives. Honorable Sokotwane asked the Zambian people to wait for the debt restructuring program. There was a time we all witnessed headmasters, teachers, and other civil servants were mobilized to go to the airport to receive, uh, uh, to give a thunderous welcome to President Daka in the The civil servants were coerced to clapping and cheering and singing praise songs to the president for the great achievement that they that, that, that made whilst in Paris. And Comrade Musokotwane came to the floor of the house to assure the Zambian people that now the job was done. Uh, he went further to mock the PF that um, the, the, the UPND government had done uh, what the PF failed to do in seven years, in just seven months. The Zambian people, believing that Honorable Mzokotwane was sincere in his uh, uh, discourse, began to wait. He created some legitimate expectation in the minds of the Zambian people, who now thought that the cost of living would be lower, the cost of commodities would be lower. But today, we have seen that things are getting worse. I want to agree with uh, Comrade Bidach Tala. I also want to agree with Dr. Caleb Fundanga when they say that um, as uh, African countries, we need to wake up and collect enough resources from our mineral wealth. Uh, Dr. Fundanga has asked African countries to awaken and be able to collect appropriate taxes from their mineral resources. Uh, at the same time, uh, Bitach Tal has observed that um, the professional history of um, our finance minister as a lecturer, um, it's something that is admirable. But his performance as Minister of Finance, going by his past record, 
leaves much to be desired. So I want to join uh, other honourable members that are calling for the resignation of Honourable Stube Komsokotwane from his position as Finance Minister. And for a good reason, or good reasons, Comrade Msokotwane will, for some reason or the other, we will not be able to collect appropriate taxes from the mining houses. Honorable Msokotwane is ready to go to any length to protect the mining houses at the expense of the starving Zambians. He will do everything possible to ensure that he protects the profits of the private capital owned by the mining houses. When we talk about investors, country men and women, a good investor to us as Zambians is one who is ready to pay appropriate taxes here in Zambia. A good investor should be one that is ready to enter into a win-win agreement. We are tired of being blackmailed by investors. Comrade Musokotwani has delivered his uh, speech today, constantly referred to the threats from the mining houses that they were threatening to leave. Countrymen and women, I want to take this opportunity to call upon Zambians to start getting ready to take over these mines. Zambians have run these mines before. These mines operated profitably in the hands of Zambians many years ago when technology was not as advanced as it is today. I have confidence that the University of Zambia has trained enough mining engineers that possess the competence and skill to run these mines. We cannot continue to be blackmailed and threatened by these mining houses, threatening to leave whenever we want to collect appropriate taxes. We don't need cowards, leaders like Comrade Musokotwane, who are constantly scared, uh, who are receiving threats from the mining houses, meaning that most of the policies Comrade Musokotwane is coming up with are policies that are made under duress because some mines are threatened to leave. He has constantly referred to mines threatening to leave. And the reason why he has continued to give them favorable uh, uh, taxes and incentives that have disadvantaged this economy. We cannot continue talking about mineral royalty tax because this is a subject that we tackled sufficiently on the floor of the House when Comrade Musokotwane delivered his first budget speech where he had reduced mineral oil tax from 6% to 3%. He went further to make mineral oil tax detectable. We warned Honorable Musokotwane that as a result of these measures he was putting in place, not only were we going to lose revenue to the Treasury, we were also going to have a shortage of forex on the market something that we're experiencing today. So having realized that um, Honorable Msokotwane gave us assurances that have not come to pass, it remains our strong position as members of parliament that we have lost confidence completely in Honorable Stubeko Msokotwane and that uh, as the UPND are preparing to leave in 2026, who still need a finance minister that can at least stabilize uh, the economy and ensure that um, the uh, cost of living is um, uh, reduced further. The famous 3 million metric tons of copper production per annum is a pipe dream. It's such a figure in the air that Honorable Msokotwane and his friends have been tossing there is it's not attached to anything. There is no reference to any support systems like the energy sector. It's a figure that is aimed to dupe the Zambian people. It's a carrot that is dangled in the face of the Zambian people so that we continue or we remain vulnerable you know, to be duped by these mining houses as they collect our minerals free of charge. So we want to uh, propose by way of alternative policy. In the event that Comrade Musokotwane has difficulties 
to make mineral royalty tax deductible or indeed to reinstate it from 3% to 6%, can he set milestones? Can the next finance minister, sorry, can the next finance minister after Commonwealth Secretary resigns, can the next finance minister set up my milestones that must be achieved by mining houses before they access these incentives? That's the only sure way that will either protect our revenue or indeed be able to benefit from the increased production in our mining sector. So this is a very strong position that we want to take uh, as uh, MPs, seeing that uh, the rhetoric that Comrade Musopotwane continues to feed the Zambian people will not take us anywhere. For those that listen to his ministerial statement, he continues with the blame game. The blame game against the PF did what? PF did that. He, in his statement, said uh, the low production in the mining sector is as a result of two big mines being idle over the past four years. Now, if the Honourable Minister was to be sincere, he should have explained to the Zambian people why he went ahead to offer incentives to the mining sector when there had been two mines that were idle uh, leading to a reduced uh, revenue from the mining sector. If that was the position, how could you have then gone ahead to even offer further incentives to the mining sector which was not performing in the previous three or so years? So we take it that um, Honorable Mzokotwane has no solutions whatsoever uh, you know, to revamp our mining sector and indeed our economy. So the decent thing that he is to do is to take a back seat at the backbencher. The people from his constituency still need the services. But as a country, we have come to a conclusion that Comrade Musokotwane will not take us anywhere. Mm -hmm. Ladies and gentlemen, on that note, I wish to thank you most sincerely for your contribution and your work. Thank you very much. Uh, I'd like to thank the leader of the opposition for uh, summarizing, especially on a very serious backbone issue, which is to do with mining. I think the message from the leader of the opposition, uh, when he has asked for Honorable Shabotone to resign, he only said, it's for a car, but you may not come up with And I think he, what he Honorable Shabotone has uh, shown from MMD time up to now, the economic policies associated to him as an economic dynasty has not proved to be uh, something that we can rely on as a country. There are a lot of brains in this nation, and some of them young brains and old brains, some of them of his equal age. That can be better than one of those, according to um, the way uh, the leader of the, the, the opposition has articulated. He further said, Mane, they knew about debt, they knew about all these factors. And today, some of the people that she borrowed part of the debt that she is associated with the PF, because the PF only borrowed the 12.8 12, 12, 12 billion. We know about Formula One roads and how she attracted. It was under the same uh, uh, honorable to the Then he he talked about the debt structure, which was talked, uh, which was overpraised as, the, as the, 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 the president entered the Champions League, and the people were brought to 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 to, to worship the Champions League status. But I think we saw the same president begging desperately from diplomats. Uh, the, from the Champions League. Champions don't believe. <laughs> Just to uh, some other to beg from the the what? The, the diplomats to help him restructure the debt. Because what we knew, even through Parliament, the way we were not, is that the debt was restructured. So we were taken apart when we saw the president begging the diplomats to help him restructure the debt. Is this another lie? Um, another thing I think he talked about was the issues of copper production. He said that uh, as if we are offered that there must be some threshold to be raised here 
for anyone to qualify to receive in, uh, you know, incentives, like uh, those associated with taxes, minor taxes. And I think uh, the, uh, the, uh, the leader of the opposition did underscore that uh, uh, the mines so far are, are punctuated with uh, under declaring of production volumes, also under declaring of profits. So as if we have a suggestion that if whoever wants to qualify, if such incentive was to be maintained, let them declare rightly and let them show that uh, their production has become very competitive because of what the targets that we have set in the national uh, national development plan as a nation. I think we know that uh, copper is now below two uh, six hundred and eighty metric tons. I don't know where the three, met three million metric tons drill is coming from. And we all know from government statistics that uh, traditional exports are to foreign by 14.8%. And the major traditional export is copper, which accounts for 71% of the traditional exports. So given that scenario, we have a fake one. You know, the, when they are showing you a, a, a lemon and they want to convince you it's a watermelon, you say you can't do something. Na test ya kwa ya watermelon na lemon. Lemon ya sasa kwa kutia watermelon. Na size na kitu sana. How were well, they convincing us that this is a watermelon? When they are showing us a lemon. And uh, this is what uh, the people of the opposition is saying. Ah, uh, even though the circumstances. And the man on the same time happens to be the senior wolf. In this case, we ask our comrade Mr. Kotwani to be decent enough to resign given the circumstances. Because Zambians are not even having it any easier. We are only receiving graphs and statistics which are cooked. Inflation is cooked. Other things are cooked because they are not tied with the balance of payment and even export volumes. That is why I think if I um, to put words in my leader, uh, in the mouth of my leader, I think that's what she was trying to say. Having said that, I don't know if I told you have any other uh, question from the media that will be funny, but we promise you that on many, on many of these issues, uh, for us to not to be misquoted, we have developed a culture to provide alternative policy. We have a very sound 2021 2026 uh, you know, manifesto, a PF, which we plan to rule the country and we will give the people a sample of how we wanted to do the nation if they gave us. They want through position papers which are going to be uh, police police. So at this point, I invite the media if there is any other issue that you didn't understand from all of, any of the speakers to come in and ask a question. If there is no, I think we can uh, call it today.